Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now Arduino have released a new ball that uses their nano form factor. It's the Arduino Nano ESP32. That's right, it's not an ARM processor based board. It's not an AVR based board. It's not a RISC-V based board. It's an ESP32 based board. And I've got hold of one and I've been testing it out. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so here it is, the Arduino Nano ESP32. Here is the main chip with the CPU and the wireless stuff on it. You notice here that it's USB-C, there's a reset button. There's a power LED and a user programmable LED. There's also an RGB LED here. Of course, you've got the castellated edges and then you've got all the pins you'd expect on a uh, Arduino Nano, uh, including the analog pins and the digital pins. And so we'll get more into that in a minute. So what is this? The processor used by the board is the Ublox Nora W106, which is an ESP32 S3 uh, processor. So that uses the Extensor LX7 running at 240 megahertz dual core. So the point is here, this isn't ARM, this isn't AVR, this isn't even RISC-V. This is actually uh, something pretty unique to the ESP32, the Extensor LX7, you get 512K of RAM and eight megabytes of flash. And then you get built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So that's Wi-Fi 4, so that's 802.11bg and N and Bluetooth LE version 5. Now, this isn't the first time I've done videos featuring the Extensor LX7 or in fact the LX6, that's the ESP32 S2, the ESP32 S3. This video here does a power and performance efficiency between all these dual core processors. And I have another video doing a similar thing for single core processors, including RISC-V, which one comes out on top. And I'll tell you now, it's not the ESP32. So although they may be fast, 240 megahertz, maybe they're dual core, they're not necessarily the most power efficient. Just something to note when you go down this uh, path with the Arduino Nano ESP32. Now to use it, uh, the best thing uh, I found is to use the Arduino IDE 2.x. Uh, now you need to go to the board manager and type in ESP32 to search for. Now two things will come up. Here's the ESP32 by the people that make the chip, Expressive Systems. Now that supports all the whole range of generic ESP32 boards that there are uh, out there, but you don't want that one. You want the ESP32 board pack by Arduino itself, because that specifically has support for the Arduino Nano. If you don't have this one installed, it's not gonna work properly. That stumbled me there a little bit. I just assumed it would work by this. You've got to have that installed. Absolutely necessary. Now you can have them installed together. That's not a problem, but you've got to have that one. So yes to that one, no to that one. Although you can have it installed. And the other thing to notice is that when you try to pick the port for your Arduino uh, Nano, make sure you go to the DFU version that's using the USB-C, not the serial port version. Now, I, for a while, didn't notice the difference and was picking this one and I couldn't get it to program and I didn't know why. You have to make sure you choose the DFU version and then it'll work absolutely fine. So here is the pinout, as I said earlier. So, of course, you've got the built-in LED, you've got the RGB one, USB power, and then you've got uh, the different uh, analog and digital pins, as we would expect from the uh, from the Arduino, and including, of course, SPI and all this kind of stuff. So everything you'd expect from a microcontroller and specifically from an Arduino Nano. Now, what I'm going to do to demo the Arduino Nano is because it's wireless, it would be great if we get to talk up to the cloud. So what I want to achieve is to have a potentiometer, that's basically a variable resistor, and as I twist it around, a dial on a mobile phone goes up and down according to that, and it does that by going into the cloud. So we're showing wireless connectivity here. You're doing something, this is Internet of Things. You're doing something on your, on your Arduino Nano ESP32, temperature, humidity, whatever it is you're doing. In this case, I'm just using this variable resistor and that data is going up to uh, the cloud. So that's what we want to achieve. And the way we're gonna do that is by using MQTT. MQTT is the glue to all this. So a message, an MQTT message is sent from the Arduino up to the cloud and then the cloud synchronizes with your smartphone showing you what's on there. Now I've got several videos about how MQTT works. I won't go into it again here. The first one is MQTT with Raspberry 
Pi and Arduino shows you how you can get that to work with both of those systems. And the second one is monitor room temperature remotely with MQTT and uh, Arduino. Again, a similar video where I show you how you can have a temperature sensor and how you can have that being reported on your mobile phone. Now to do this, we're gonna be using the Mosquito uh, uh, MQTT server broker. You're free to use it for any application. That's the test version, but please do not abuse or rely upon it for anything important. So this is a test one, but it could be shut down uh, for rebooting or for maintenance. There's no guarantee that it's gonna be there. It's a service provided by the community. So all great for testing, great for demoing something like this, but don't rely on it if you're trying to release a commercial product. And of course, don't abuse it, because if it gets abused, then of course they'll shut it down and uh, you know maybe turn it off for an hour until the traffic calms down or whatever they've, they're gonna do. So great for testing, don't abuse it, don't rely on it for a public service. So I'm going to use the IoT MQTT panel, which is an app in the Android Play Store. I'm sure there are similar things for iOS. I use this app. There are others. I'm not affiliated with this author. I've just found this app very useful. So what's actually going to happen, and this is a screenshot that you actually will get, okay, is that the device, the Nano, will send it up to the cloud. This uh, our Android app will sync with the cloud. And as we move the potentiometer, we're going to get this moving here up and down according to what we're, how we're moving it. And it works absolutely brilliantly. So this is the little circuit we're going to build. There's a potentiometer. It's got three pins on it, one for ground, one for current, and one for the analog reading. And we need to connect these up to three pins on our Arduino Nano ESP32. So that's what we're going to build in real life. Uh, schematically, diagrammatically, it looks like this. So there's your uh, potentiometer, there's the board. So you connect the ground up to the left-hand pin, you connect up the 3.3 volts to the right-hand pin, and you connect the middle pin over to analog zero, A0 over here on the board. And that's it, that's all you need to do. Three pins, two of them of power, one for reading the value. And the code is very, very simple. Basically in the setup, you wanna establish the serial connection, you wanna start your Wi-Fi connection, and you wanna to connect to the MQTT server. And you've defined all these things earlier in the code, uh, but that's basically what you do. Connect to the serial, connect to the Wi-Fi, connect to the MQTT server. And then in the main loop, you just do an analog read of A0, that's the pin we connect it to. You don't wanna be keep sending it up there all the time. So you wanna make sure to see, is there a difference between the current sensor reading and the previous one, the old one, and because you get quite a lot of uh, readings, very lot of number steps in between zero all the way to four, it's actually 4,096 steps, I'm saying if it's changed by 75. So it can jump around a bit, depends on the quality of your potentiometer and so on, the quality of your power supply and all that kind of stuff, it does jump around a bit. I find that if it's moved more by 75, then we can move the needle on the uh, on the MQTT uh, application on the phone. You basically then create a message and just send it. And this is how you do it uh, with the MQTT uh, library for Arduino. Very, very simple. You just add in the sensor value there in the message and just send and it just gets sent. Very, very simple code. Now the full code with all the definitions and the headers and all that stuff, you'll find in my GitHub repository uh, under examples, Arduino Nano ESP32 review. Look in there, you get all the information that you need. Now, of course, this is a dual core microcontroller board. So I do have a whole video on how you program the Arduino for dual core programming. And I've created a generic sketch, which personally I find quite useful, which will work with the Raspberry Pi. It will work with the ESP32. It will work with the ESP32 S3, all using the Arduino IDE. Just take that generic boilerplate template code and you can automatically have dual core working on all of your projects uh, and that's uh, and that's what I'm going to do now I'm going to take that code and demo it to you what it does is you've got one core counting upwards one core counting downwards and one core is sending a random number to its friend and the friend is printing out so there's this one doing something counting up this one counting down and there's communication between the two it's all fully synchronized with a lock and so on I go into that in this video Arduino dual core programming but just demo to it now on this Arduino nano board a 
if you're interested in the code for that, then you'll find that also again in my GitHub repository under examples dual core for Raspberry Pi 2040, ESP32, ESP32 S3. So there's the code in there for you. Now, are there any downsides? Well, the main downside seems to be the price. It costs $18, 18 euros, sorry, for this ball. That's $20. Uh, 19 euros if you want it with the headers, that's $21. Now, a Raspberry Pi Pico W costs just 7 euros here in Europe. So that's quite a big difference between the two. And there are other ESP32 boards that can work with Arduino that are cheaper if you buy it directly from China, maybe even only three, four, five dollars, depending on which one you get. Now, there will, I'm sure, be uh, clones of the Arduino Nano ESP32, particularly since the ESP32 is such a, a well-used chip amongst the Chinese clones. And so I think there will be a clone of this. And when that comes out, it will be cheaper. As soon as I spot one, uh, do message me if you do see one on Twitter or if you do see one. Or if I spot one, maybe I'll order it and we'll see how it how it works. Now, the other thing that got me was delivery. It was €11.79 Euro plus five, almost six euros in taxes here in the EU. And that got shipped from Italy, which, of course, where Arduino is based, to another mainland EU country. So if you think about it, I was paying 18 19 I paid, so I got them on the headers, plus another... A load of money here 11 plus 5 so I actually spent quite a lot of money to get this little board uh, which you know 30 something plus euros to get this board uh, and I could have just got a Raspberry Pi locally shipped locally from a local distributor for you know very much much less but there you go that's what I do for you guys I will buy these things and try it out now there will be local distributors in Europe for sure people who can sell you a board that they've bought a whole bunch of them so they're paying less in shipping uh, uh, and that will happen. Uh, so watch out for those if you want to get hold of one. In the USA, the shipping was a bit, bit better. $1.43 for the postal version, up to $10 for FedEx one day, shipping to, to, to New York. That was the example I put into their website. So seems to be a bit better if you do buy it in the USA. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. Now you can follow me on all of the trendy uh, social media sites. Here are all the handles on there. Depending on what's up and what's down today, then uh, just pick whichever one you use and you can see the stuff that I'm posting on there. You can also contact me if that service allows that. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explained. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, well, please, I invite you to stick around by subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.